Hey yo, what's up Troublemakers? It's Trouble Games, and welcome to the scroll reading for Assassin's Creed Chronicles China. Now, today we're gonna get into the scrolls and like the background information of like what really led up to the game for Assassin's Creed Chronicles China. So, let's get into it! Hoorah! So, first off, let's read scroll number one. <laughs> so, Xiao Jun was born in 1505 in imperial captivity and was raised to become a concubine in the Forbidden City. At first she was of lower rank and was one of many girls who hoped to become a wife of the Emperor. She was taught the traditional arts displayed by the ladies of the imperial court, embroidery, singing, and reading, but early on showed exceptional talent for dance and music. Her agility and dance-like discretion fascinated Emperor Zhang De, as he liked abusing his powers to uh, to humiliate his court. He often used the child Xiao Jun as his spy or thief to stage jokes against eunuchs or even ministers. He also forbid that Xiao Jun be foot bound, so that she didn't lose her dancing abilities. Although foot binding was a key asset to becoming an attractive lady, while she was still a child, Xiao Jun witnessed the execution of Liu Jin, leaders, or leader of the Tigers. Ugh. A small group of powerful and influential eunuchs, the Zhangdi Emperor had found proof of Liu Jin's plot to assassinate him, and had, oh, had the traitor tortured using the Lin Qi technique, also known as Death by a Thousand Cuts. The eunuch's agony lasted for two days, and the young Xiao Jun would never forget the punishment for betraying her emperor. Although Liu Jin had been stealing considerable amounts of gold and silver from the taxes, he was betrayed and trapped by one of his own men, Zhang Yang, an agent of the Templars and his successor as head of the Tigers. By the age of 13, through Xiao Jun's talents and Zhang Dei's affection for her, she had risen to the rank of imperial concubine. She was poised to become imperial consort or even empress, along with another girl named Zhang who was her best friend. Even then, Xiao Jun had never visited her emperor's bed since he preferred the intimate company of prostitutes and other ladies he invited in. The emperor fancied himself to become a warlord and went to fight the Mongols in the north, who were regularly raiding Chinese territory. Xiao Jun was one of the few concubines he took along with on his expeditions, to serve mostly as a spy and finally for his personal leisure. Emperor Zhang De died hairless, airless, in 1521, when Xiao Jun was only 16. Her fate was sealed and she would not become imperial consort or empress, unless Zhang De's successor was to like her, but she had never she had never had her feet or breast bound to grow graciously small, as most beautiful ladies did at the time. The powerful eunuchs known as the Tigers were back in power. After Zhang Dei had executed their leader, Liu Jin, they had remained silent and obedient, but now they were showing their real power and plotting to put their own man on the throne. During the interreg interregnum? Interregnum? Xiao Jun used her spying talents, hoping to find a way to maintain her privileges as imperial concubine, and discovered a secret war being waged in the Forbidden City. The Tigers, now led by Zhang Yang, were actually working for a secret order called Templars. There was another opposing secret brotherhood operating within the imperial society called Assassins. Their leader was Wang Yangming a famous lord and philosopher who had been shunned from Beijing years before for having offended the eunuch Liu Jin. Xiao Jun informed Wang Yangming, the Jiangxi governor and leader of the Neo-Confucian School of Mind, that she had discovered his secret identity as leader of the assassins. Alas, she was not the only one who had unraveled his secret identity. The tigers had acquired the certainty that Wang Yangming was their mortal enemy. They had started to spy on him and identified many of his allies. They were ready to strike, to purge the assassins from Beijing and the confusion that reigned in court. Due to the absence of a declared emperor, it was perfect time for the tigers to eliminate their opponents. 
They planned a massive operation to get rid of assassins, but this time, they were the ones making mistakes. Word of the plot leaked to the concubines, and Xiao Jun could warn Yang Ming in time. Wang Yang Ming called his best assassins into the Forbidden City in an attempt to kill the tigers before they could strike, but they were defeated. Those captured were tortured and killed using Ling Chi, and all those suspected to have ties to assassins and those related to them were murdered. Ma Yang Cheng, one of the tigers known as the Butcher, was the man who performed the executions. The investigator in chief, Wei Bin, also known as the Snake, was very thorough when it came to pointing fingers toward potential traitors. Many innocents were murdered following his orders. It appeared that no ally of the assassins would escape the snake. This led what, her, yeah, this led Yang Ming to order a full retreat of all of his agents from the Forbidden City and of all possible allies, including the young Xiao Jun. For a while, Wang Yang Ming led the Beijing Brotherhood, hoping to find a weakness in the Tiger's organization and take them down before they could steal imperial power. He, tra he trained Xiao Jun in the arts and the philosophy of the assassins, calling her little sister. As a recruit, her gift for stealth was a valuable tool in gathering information critical to Yang Ming's operations. But Xiao Jun seemed incapable of staying her hand when a Templar was in sight. Her talent for killing was as graceful as it was efficient, and the master used to refer to her style as a dance of death. She soon reached the rank of initiate, initiate and was awarded a hidden blade. Jia Xing, a cousin of the Zhangdi Emperor, was made the new emperor, and there was no doubt that he was Zhang Yang's puppet. His disdain for the duties of an emperor was perfect for the tigers. They would rule in his stead, making important decisions while he spent his time in brothels and private palaces. They would even choose his consorts to better control him. Thus, the reign of the tigers started. Yu Deong, soon known as the slaver, enforced the slave trade, selling opponents to the Portuguese and making huge profits, while humiliating and exiling the enemies of the Templars. In the meantime, Zhang Yang was looking for a way to eradicate more prominent enemies and set up what was known to be as the Great Right Controversy. During the Great Rights Controversy, the Tigers murdered many of their opponents, not only assassins. The purge led by Zhang Yang was executed by his minions, the Tigers known as the Snake, the Butcher, and the Demon. Wang Yang Ming had to disappear, and Xiao Jun was trained by another mentor, Zhu Ziyuan. I probably slaughtered that really bad. Under his supervision and during the secret war in Beijing, she reached the full rank of assassin and took the leap of faith. With maturity, Xiao Jun adapted her techniques to physical strengths. Oh, to her physical strengths and weaknesses. Unhappy with the wrist blade of the assassins, she designed a lighter, more versatile one, better suited to the martial arts. Hidden under her left boot, the blade allowed her to perform deadly kicks in the midst of a close combat. Her sword skills were perfected in the dark alleys of the city, fighting off Templar agents. Before leaving, Xiao Jun wanted to see her best friend Zhang, and took the incredible risk of infiltrating the Forbidden City. She knew the place by heart, but would have been slaughtered by the eunuch guards if she had been caught. Fortunately, the Xiao Jing Emperor did not fancy living in the Forbidden City and was often outside of it, leaving the level of security lower than usual. Xiao Jun found Zhang and was astonished to hear that she wanted to stay, even if the new emperor was a brutal and cruel man. Zhang was actually lucky enough to please him and was now Imperial Consort, the highest rank before Empress. She told her old friend to leave in peace and did not want to hear about Templar controlling the tigers, even less the man she'd expect to become her husband. Xiao Jun accepted Zhang's decision, uh, decision. She remembered how important her career as concubine was when she was one of Zhang Di's favorites. She left the Forbidden City for the last time, or so she thought. The tigers were now confident they controlled China. They retreated in luxurious, oh my gosh, can't speak. <laughs> they retreated in luxurious palaces to enjoy their new power and put another puppet in place. 
Yan Song was one well, was to be the public face of the administration, while Jia Jing turned himself completely towards private affairs. In the shadows, the tigers completed their hunt for assassins all over China and started to search for ancient artifacts, as well as consolidating their grip and financial power through diverse operations throughout the country. Isolated, Xiao Jun and Zhu Jian despaired and finally decided to leave the country in order to seek the help of other assassins. Zhu suggested going to master assassin Ezio Auditore, whose reputation had spread over the world. It was a long journey and neither of them spoke the lang language, but it was their only hope. They traveled secretly to Macau, where transportation was easiest towards Europe. During their trip, they witnessed the state of the Brotherhood's networks in the, uh, in the country. Most safe houses had been raided. No assassin worthy of the name was left alive. They were alone, unless Wang Yangming was still alive somewhere trying to recruit and train new followers for what seemed a feudal war. In 1524, Xiao Jun and Zhu Jian reached Venice, traveling in a Portuguese vessel transporting porcelain and silk. Once in Italy, they thought they were safe from the tigers, but they were followed by Templar agents. Ambushed by elite soldiers armed with muskets, Zhu Jian sacrificed himself so Xiao Jun could escape alive. She finally reached Ezio Ezio's Aud oh, Ezio villa in Tuscany, where she was coldly received. Ezio seemed less than interested in the affairs of the Brotherhood, but Xiao Jun wanted to help to rebuild her own far away in China. Thanks to the support of Ezio's wife, Sophia, the elder assassin offered hospitality to the Chinese traveler, hoping that, would she, that she would soon depart from his land and life. All right, so I want to take a second after this girl to talk about something else. Um, so there is a short film that kind of like talks about what happens throughout this time where, you know, uh, uh, Xiao Jun meets Ezio. So I will put a link in the description below, um, but it's called Assassin's Creed Embers. So what it is is it talks about um, like what happens between the two like Xiao Jun and Ezio and kind of like the conflicts they struggle with which was really cool I mean it focuses more on Ezio's point of view because Ezio obviously is having more of his own struggles because Ezio is a bit older I think like in this series or like in that video he's supposed to be like in his 60s so I mean for that time period that is pretty old but like I said, I'm going to leave a link in the description below. Um, I'm going to just link the one that I watched. Xiao Jun's relationship with Ezio was complicated. She was everything Ezio had been and wanted to forget about. Passionate, vengeful, and fully devoted to the Assassin's Creed. The old master and the young woman had arguments, and finally they bled together in battle. For the agents of the Tigers had followed Xiao Jun to Tuscany. Ezio finally admitted that he could not turn his back on Xiao Jun and agreed to transmit some of his knowledge and wisdom. Impressed by her fighting abilities, he taught her a few tricks and gave the advice only a seasoned fighter could deliver. Finally, he gave Xiao Jun his blessing and let her depart with a gift, a mysterious wooden box which he insisted she did not open unless she lost her way. Xiao Jun returned to China in 1526 and using a network of old abandoned brotherhood safe houses sought out Wang Yangming. She finally found him and told him about her travels, the death of her mentor, and Ezio Ad Torre. The Chinese master was impressed by the accomplishments of the former concubine. He had not seen her since he helped her escape the forbidden city and the young dancer had become a skilled killer not only trained by Zhu Jiang, but also by the Italian legend. Xiao Jun created an invention of her own, fitting to her cat-like agility, the Sheng Bao, Biao, or rope dart, which she could use to reach high places in the glimpse of an eye or propel to a target with deadly momentum and accuracy, killing from afar. Xiao Jun passed on Ezio's mysterious box to her new master, 
Wang Yangming was astonished that the girl was offered such a precious item. He knew the box was an artifact of great power, inherited from the first civilization that had lived on Earth. She told the old man what Ezio had told her, to open the box only if she lost her way. She confessed being torn between the sacred mission to rebuild the Brotherhood and the burning, burning desire to find and kill the tigers who had murdered her friends. Thinking that the box would help her, she opened it. With Yang Ming Ming, with Yang, blah, 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 Wang Yang Ming as witness, but did not find anything. An empty box. Was this a cryptic message from Ezio? Wang Yang Ming, the philosopher, told the young woman to see the empty box as a message from a more experienced man. Even if he knew the item to be a powerful and ancient artifact, the box was merely a tool she needed to fill herself. Only this way would she fulfill her destiny. The box was always empty and Ezio knew that Xiao Jun would have to face her responsibility and accept that only she could decide which path to follow. That path was the one Ezio had taken himself and could not encourage Xiao Jun to follow. Nevertheless, he had seen the rage in the young woman's eyes, the anger behind the tears. To recreate the brotherhood, she would take the path of blood. The tigers would perish by her hand, and on their very corpse, a new China would flourish, free from the schemes of the Templar Order. She accepted Wang Yang Ming's instructions and to use Ezio's box as bait to lure the tigers out of hiding. Maybe they would know what the box really was. Alrighty then guys, I'm gonna leave this episode, or this scroll reading episode here for right now. If you guys did enjoy, please let me know down in the comments below, because I really, I kinda liked it. I mean, I love getting the background information of games and stuff like that, so like I said, let me know down in the comments below what you guys think. I'm kinda debating on if I want to go into the uh, like important people because there is some good information like good background information but then again it's also like you know is it really necessary so if you guys want to see that let me know down in the comments below that way I can do more like gameplay recordings like I did for this episode so thank you guys so much for watching if you enjoyed hit that like and subscribe button that way you guys know when I upload more videos. Again, thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys in my next video. Later, guys. Hoorah. <laughs>